On December 2nd of 2020, Emrek would set a score on the map Black Rover, one that in my opinion may be the greatest aim score of all time. The goal of this video is to try and show the insane scope of this play and put it into perspective. But to truly do this, I'll have to take you back to June of 2018, because this would be the month that Black Rover was initially qualified. It was a sort of peak of the tv size 1-2 meta that was going on at the time. This is because the map's structure is literal 5-star jumps for 2 minutes, leading into 10 seconds of cross-map 1-2 jumps. The map was basically made for the explicit purpose of giving massive amounts of PP. The thing is that despite this, it quickly became clear that the top difficulty was not meant for DT. It was just too hard. Before and during the entire qualified period, there would only be one pass on the map with DT, which was flying tuna with a 13 miss. This score actually would have been worth 600 PP if ranked, which was actually not an insubstantial amount at the time. Funnily enough though, after being qualified, the map would be disqualified four separate times, before finally being ranked on the 20th of July, 2018. The thing about this map was that even the other difficulties were generally too difficult, with the expert difficulty, which is basically just extreme but spacing nerfed, getting 5 missed at best, weeks after the map had been ranked. This set the top difficulty of the map as literally impossible to FC. But there was one guy who got weirdly close, which was Akanyai, with a 9 miss on the jumps at the end. To say this is a lucky run for him would be probably an understatement. And you could see that even this run was much more of a pass attempt than an FC. I think one of the comments on this play sums up pretty well what people thought of the map, with the statement that 4-5 to five misses would be the lowest possible that anyone could get on the map. Over time though, things would start to change. This power creep is most apparent on the lower extra difficulty, because it was really the only one that was possible at the time. This is because this one went from a 5 miss being the best, to 4 or 5 players all 1 missing it. The thing is that even on this difficulty there were no FCs until July of 2019, over a year after the map was ranked. But this was where things would begin to change, with Whitecap finally ushering in a new era of jump aim. He's obviously not the point of this video, but I think he played a pivotal role in changing what was considered impressive. And for other top players, I think he broke the boundaries of what seemed possible. I say this because only 3 months after the first DTFC on the extra difficulty, White Cat would get a 3 mod FC on it. This would set him up as far, far ahead of the competition, which made people wonder what his runs on the top difficulty would look like. And they were expectedly pretty impressive, with 2 5 missed runs on the map in late 2019, before finally, on January 2020, he would get an absurd 2 missed run on the map, and Badu would also do the same. These were both really lucky runs. But they did make a DTFC seem somewhat possible, but still extremely improbable. You may have noticed that so far I haven't mentioned the protagonist of our story once. But there is a good reason for this. It's because at the beginning of 2019, Emrek was ranked 3000 in the world. But in one year, between 2019 and 2020, he had reached the top 50. You know the drill, fastest improving player who has inhumanly snappy aim. I would still say though that at the beginning of 2020 his aim was still pretty far inferior to White Cat's. But unlike most players who shoot up to this level so quickly, Emrek never started slowing down. This is why by June he reached the top 15, and was clearly getting very close to having some of the best aim in the game. This is why that month he'd become the second person to FC the extra difficulty of Black Rover with 3 mod, even beating White Cat's accuracy on the map. This would show how close he was finally getting to being the best, but he still wasn't quite there yet which is why the next few months would be so pivotal, since they gave him the chance to become likely the best aim player in the entire game. You can see this progression pretty easily through his 10 star FC, which is just an unreal score, with 320 BPM jumps that are legitimately cross map for 2 minutes. I also think this highlights just how strong he was getting at high BPM, which was needed for the 310 BPM Black Clover. This aspect of his playstyle also actually set him apart from White Cat, since when White Cat tried this map, he had a lot of trouble. This is not necessarily only because of a skill difference, since first this was obviously one of the luckiest runs Emrek has ever had on the map, judging by his reaction. Oh my god! That's my first 10 star! What? Dude! Especially since this is his normal reaction to getting 1000 PP. 1000 PP, I'll take it. But then there's also a bit of a controversial point, in that Emrek's significantly smaller tablet area likely gives him the advantage when it comes to this level of speed and difficulty. 
This was why he was definitely in an advantageous position for a score on Black Rover. But no one could have possibly believed what he would actually do without seeing it. Now before we look at this play, I want you to think about how this map has progressed. With two years, seeing the map go from a 13 miss to a 2 miss with DT. But interestingly enough, even through all of this, no one had been able to pass the map 3 mod. Since despite the efforts of most of the best aim players in the entire game, the map was just too hard. Now, I want you to think how Emrek would tie Ycat's miscount. Oh if you guess with the mod combination that no one had passed the map with yet, well then, you'd be correct. Yeah, Emmer decided not only to pass Black Rover's 7 star difficulty with 3 mod, but instead, 1 miss the entire ending. Which is the least misses anyone had ever gotten on that part with DT. The thought process behind this play just baffles me. Especially because of one part of the play. Since obviously the question comes up of how much this play is worth, and I have to come with the extremely disappointing answer of only a tiny bit more than Flying Tuna's pass from 2018 because of a miss that he got in the middle of the map. This would have been 1400 PP for an FC, and 1200 PP without the first miss. This is why I think this play is not only insane, but important. First because it represents the terrible hypocrisy of combo based PP, but don't get me into that. But mainly I think it's important because in my opinion this is the sort of Moe Kai of aim. A play people literally used to use to make it obvious that you were hacking so you could quit the game because it was just that ridiculous, is now technically fc -able. This is also why I think this marks a paradigm shift in the game. Since although it could definitely be argued against, I think this constitutes an entirely different level of aim than has ever been seen before in Osu. Especially since this isn't the only play of this type. Emrex done things like a noise 3 miss, which is an unhinged score, beating the best play by 400 combo and the next best miscount by 7. And then there's his first of the year 3 mod play along with so many others that I don't have time to mention. This is why Emrek fascinates me so much, since through his plays he's shown an unparalleled ability to both play and improve. And I think this play especially shows how he's teetering on the edge of becoming a force like none other the game has ever seen. Which is why I think this score is pretty cool.